Okay, let's just jump right into it. Because you know what I'm about to say, and I know you're not going to like it. But here it goes. Mad Apple will blow you out of the fucking water. It's one of the funnest nights you could possibly ever have at a Cirque show. Yes, it is not necessarily a Cirque show, but that's okay because for the first time ever, a Cirque production benefits from not having Cirque as the leading draw. Start to finish, it's so much fun. I mean, a traditional Cirque show, you come in, you take your seats, you sit there, you're quiet, you look at your phone, and you wait for the show to start. Not at Mad Apple, you come in, and you're instantly having a party. Comedy and magic are happening, and there's people just having a blast everywhere you look, and they want you to get up, and they want you to walk around and take photos. Everybody's having so much fun. So originally when the show was announced, it was promoted as a less raunchy absinthe with a nightclub vibe. And I can say, after seeing the show twice now, that is not the case. I've seen Absinthe. Absinthe is something completely different. This show doesn't want to be Absinthe, nor is it trying to be Absinthe. What it's trying to do is entertain the shit out of you. And that's exactly what it does. What the works have created is something so unique and so fun. People are going to be so pleasantly surprised. So the reasons why you should go to this show is because it's gonna give you the Cirque experience elevated. They don't shit on Cirque in any way whatsoever. They're not making uh, Cirque the, the elements, the only appeal. Everything else is just as strong as the Cirque acts. Everything. My only gripes are with uh, the costumes and makeup and then the lack of the lobby changing. Other than that, everything is perfect. I have seen Mad Apple twice now. Once at the preview performance and one after the show's gala premiere. The Cirque acts are amazing. The lady who hangs from her hair. I mean, everyone knows I'm not a fan of aerial duo straps. I just, I, once you've seen it, you've seen it and I've seen it too many times. But this one is quick, it's short, it's right in your face, it's sexy and it's very skilled. Uh, the hand balancer guy, his act is great and I love the structure he's on because it's like the Empire State Building. Um, that's another thing too, some of the sets aren't that great, but once they're mixed in with the element of the projection, it, everything becomes uh, that much better. Nothing has been changed in the lobby. Once you walk into the theater, you see all the changes. Uh, the first thing you notice is the stage is a ginormous bar. It has one big bar in the front, and then two in the back where you can walk up onto the stage and go order a drink. And that's exactly what they want you to do. They don't want you ordering a drink up front. They want you to come in and go up to the Cirque bar and order the drink. Now everything's like pre-made little cocktail drinks. The fact that Cirque lets you walk up onto one of their stages and uh, interact with cast, take selfies, uh, act a damn fool is possibly one of the most interactive things they've done since letting people walk on the bridge the curious um, stage this is fucking awesome so kudos to the interactiveness with the, the bar themed stage top of the stage actually lowers from the ceiling and fills in the area that used to be a bar, making it the, you know, traditional Cirque One Ring uh, stage. And it's just a transformation that, you know, you as a Cirque fan always appreciate seeing. Let's talk about the music. I think I caught maybe two original songs and there was no singing or anything. It was more just like background music. Uh, it's top notch. The songs are done so well. Yes, you hear like DMX on a Cirque stage, but it works. I'm not complaining. This guy is a star. Um, the dude who plays the clarinet, I, there was something about the way he moves and the way he plays just makes me so happy. The thing that makes the band for me stand out is how much fun the drummer is having. Oh my God, I am absolutely in love with this guy. He is just living in the moment and he's damn good at what he does. So there are two main singers, a male and a female, and then two backup singers, I believe. Like, they're, they're good singers, but they're not in the same level as a most Cirque singers would be with the falsetto and the range and all that. 
These people are just classy, jazzy, soulful, beautiful toned singers that make the show feel extremely authentic. And I'm a huge fan. So there's about 11 Cirque elements in the show. Sometimes as solo acts and sometimes three acts could be on the stage at the same time taking their turn. So one act will go for about a minute, stop. Another act will start and stop. And then the third act will finish. Sometimes there's two. When this is happening, it's pure genius in the fact that you can just see so many of these disciplines just bam, boom, back to back, back to back. It's fabulous. Some of the... The acts are a little tongue in cheek, like I'm not gonna lie, the basketball hoop diving is silly. But once you get into it, you are truly into it. I mean, they are having a blast and they're doing some cool shit and it looks cool and they're having fun. The lady who hangs from her hair, like I sat in the front row and I saw that from the front row and I was speechless, just stunned. The song could have been better, born this way, but uh, the way that she moves her body up there and the way that she just commands the entire audience because of um, she's hanging from her fucking hair like it's breathtaking my top three acts are the Icarian games never seen it better my second favorite act is the Russian cradle I don't know what it is something about a big broody dude like that and then the scene where he puts on the blindfold and the music goes quiet and he does his little grunts I love that scene. But my favorite act of the show, shadow puppet comedy act, where the performer basically pays tribute to the biggest Broadway musical of all time, which is Lion King. And this act is both, it's like heartwarming and ridiculously stupid at the same time. And what more can you ask for on a certain stage? The guy who does the act performs a couple different times throughout the night. Uh, he gave me this nice little parting gift. Um, it's truly what I love about Cirque, the unexpected. Something you never thought you'd see on a Cirque stage and it absolutely grabs your attention from start to finish. So those are my top three acts. So let's talk about the comics. The first one is Brad Williams. And I will be completely honest with you. I, I've only heard of him when he took the stage the first time I saw the show. I was extremely impressed. It was a little raunchy. But when I saw it the second show, so much better. Still raunchy, but not dumb and gross. He's only going to be until August 18th. So make sure you see him before then because he is hilarious. And like I said, I wasn't a fan. I'm clearly now a fan. The guy is that good. So the second comedian is dude right here. Uh, I don't know his name. I'm going to tell you this right now. I have never been more impressed. It's so funny to watch this guy do what he does. I don't want to give much away. He basically does this uh, improv comedy magic routine that starts at like an 8 and goes to like a 20. And by the end of it, the entire crowd, they are on their feet because he's that good at what he does. His reveal, doesn't matter if you know how it's done, it will take your breath away. It will make you get up and cheer. The dude literally, I said, hey, I have like 10 Cirque tattoos. He goes, now you have 11. And he pulls out this and goes, now you have a tattoo of my face. And it literally is like a rub on tattoo of his face. I mean, the highlight of the show for me, I will see the show every time I'm in Vegas, just to see him destroy the crowd. So if you're sitting in those front row seats where he can see you, you better be dressed nice, you better be on time, and you better not heckle him because he will own your ass. The third comic, he does the shadow puppet act and he is flawless. He is uh, everything I love about that type of comedy. And then the fourth person I guess you can consider a comedian is the guy who does the freestyle rap. Let me get this out of the way. Not gonna shit on his act because it is truly fascinating and it's so clever and to remember all that but it brings the show to a dead stop. It really does. Everybody enjoys it but it takes a little long to get there. I mean you've got two more acts left so it's been a long night 
point and then it just kind of comes to a standstill just for a couple little payoffs of some words and some tie-ins. If it wasn't for him, I would think it's just a party trick, but he is a performer and he does know how to work the audience and the crowd and that is a true skill. So when you see a Cirque show, you literally sit there quiet and you clap. With Matt Apple, that's not what they want from you. If you see something you like, yell, let them know. It's a party from the second you go up the stairs and see the stage. It's so inviting and it's so good. People out there that have any doubts that Matt Apple is not a Cirque show, uh, poo poo on you because it is one of the best Cirque shows because it elevated something that was stodgy and boring and uh, you know, I was starting to get a little bored with Cirque purists. I can honestly say every single one of them will find something in this show they're gonna like and and then some and it will make them like the whole the whole show even more overall. And I'm a, I'm a strong advocate for don't just see a show once. If you're going to make a trip and you're going to fly from another state, see the show multiple times. Try to see it back to back uh, at least two or three times and you can actually be able to take the whole thing in. As a legit, real Cirque fan who lives and dies by that sword, Matt Apple is one of the best Cirque shows I've seen in a long time. And you should go check it out. Make sure you take all your friends because they're gonna fucking love it. Make sure you bring a lot of money. But before I go, let me just say one thing. This awesome shirt that I have, uh, not for sale in the boutique, by the way. The merch sucks ass. Like, I have nothing new to report. Like, the merch sucks. Uh, it's really sad. Some of the shirts are cool. I got the one shirt that says MAD. Really big letters across the front. But I didn't buy anything else. They didn't have keychains. They didn't have magnets. Uh, this was at the opening premiere and after the gala. The only difference between the merch from them was, was two new shirts. They have glasses and shot glasses. Like, how hard would it have been to get an Apple shot glass? Like, look, I have a, a Coctus um, coffee mug from Luzia. Like, you can do it. You've done it. So They have basketballs that are on display that are from the show. Can't buy them. They have skateboards everywhere. Can't buy them. They have pizza boxes from the, the pizzeria out in the casino, which makes no damn sense. Whatever.